Hi everyone. Um, so I'm going to be making a video for my 1980 CJ7 uh, Jeep 304 V8 AMC engine. I'm going to be taking off the tire and then working on a breakdown of uh, changing out, looping up and changing out bearings and internal components and the vehicle. Uh, my daughter and my dog are out and about so every now and then I might have to pause you guys. Um, what it's like when you're working on your vehicle and you have children and pets. So um, I'm going to put you guys in a focus so you can see what I'm doing and I'll try to explain the best I can um, while we're going through the process. They're also on the jack stand right now. Um, I have the arm off of it and my selfie cam that I got recently to start doing some videos. Uh, so you might go up, you might go down, I'm not sure, but I'll try to pay attention to where the camera is to help you guys out. Um, so first thing is getting you guys into focus. You can see the tire there. I'm going to see if this jack arm will let me move you guys a little bit and actually stay in rest there. So what we're going to be doing, terrible angle I know, oh. uh, what we're going to be doing, and I'll try to get a better angle on this, um, I'm going to pause you guys and try to get a better setup. Creativity is finest. I have a little jack stand and I think it'll work along with the selfie stick. So first off, we're going to be taking the lug nuts off of the wheel. Um, I have already, I've already broken them and then um, I'm going to be lifting it up with the jack so that I can actually get all the lug nuts off. Uh, so give you guys a pause while I jack up the Jeep and then I will refocus you guys somewhere else. Um, if this video is to help you with removing a tire, no judgment if you don't know how to do it. Um, some people don't. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use a nice little four-way. Find the lug nut size that works for your vehicle. While the vehicle is still on the ground, what you'll do is um, you're going to break the nuts off um, and so you can either use this motion where you're on the ground and you're using your upper body strength. If you don't have a lot of upper body strength, what I like to do is I make sure that the four way is straight and then I use one foot on it and then I use my hand to push it. So that way I'm getting the leverage from my leg and my foot. But again, I can't stress enough that you need to make sure that the four way is straight so you don't end up um, rounding out the lug nuts and then you break them all off. And you don't wanna take them off all the way after that. You're gonna pause, you're gonna jack up the vehicle after you've gone, um, you're gonna go from one to the bottom, to the side, to the side, and you wanna do it that way so it doesn't stress out the wheel. Um, I'm sure there's a more technical term for that, but that's what I consider it because you can actually put too much stru stress on the stud, which is what the lug nut sits on uh, whenever it goes down on the threads your terms. You have lug nuts, which are nuts that uh, get screwed onto the studs, and then you don't want to damage those studs because then you have to go through a lot of work to change out those studs. Uh, so it's definitely imperative that you, woo! <laughs> Zena, go! Zena, go! Uh, it's imperative that you take your time. She, she wants to be a camera hog too. Zena, go! Zena, go! No, ma'am! Go, go, go! Uh, you take your time and and then you work on it that way. Um, yes, I love you too, Bubby. All right, so like I said, I'm going to pause you guys and we'll move on to the next step in this, okay? Oh gosh, Gina, let me pause it. Okay, so I'm back. Um, what I've done is I have jacked up the Jeep. Um, if you don't know how to do that, then what you do is you have your handy dandy jack, which I have right here and you find a good point to uh, put the jack on and then slowly lift up the vehicle. And then what's absolutely crucial, trying to see if what you guys can see, is to put the jack stands on. So if you notice it, I've got a jack stand right there um, and it is resting on the frame because jacks eventually do go down. <laughs> Tina, quit, Tina, quit. Um, the jacks actually to go down and um, you want to make sure that you're doing safety first with this so you have your jack stand oh gosh quit Zena go Zena go go 
Uh, so you want to have your jack stand there to support the weight of your vehicle. So again, there you go. You got a jack and the jack stand. Um, and that's going to be you guys home in a minute. Once I get you guys off of this jack stand, you'll be on the jack because it gives a better picture for what I'm doing. So I'm going to back up and take off the lug nuts, which actually, if I put you guys right here, then you will see a better process for that. And my daughter is now riding her bike, so she might come and interrupt me just like my dog did. So you just put the appropriate size on here and you're just gonna spin them off. That's it, it's not really that difficult. Again, maintaining the right angle for this. You can end up having fun with it at the end. Popped out, boop. Listen to music in the background with your trailblazer that's acting as your mobile parts place. And also, my Jeep is chained up to my trailblazer because all of my brakes are completely locked up because this vehicle's been sitting for 12 years, around 12 years. Um, so I didn't want to take any chances with rollback or anything like that. So I am going through and I'm painting out the calipers, uh, the calipers, the pads, bleeding the brake lines, things like that. So I'll do a few different videos so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, but it's starting off with this because I've already done the other side and uh, I'll be working on this side as well. So like I said, just twisting them off. Feel free to fast forward if you would like. I'm not going to hurt my feelings. It's gonna be kind of tedious to go back and forth and constantly pause you guys. So you guys can bear with me for two minutes on taking these guys off. And we only have one more left. But I'm actually going to be sanding these rims and then, shocker, spray painting them um, because this is design on a dime plus, you know, DIY repairs and stuff like that. All right, so we're getting this last lug nut off. And there we go. Had to take a pause. Alright, so the fun part is going to be because this has the locking hub on it. I get to kind of rock it back and forth. Uh, and then once it gets to this part right here, I just wiggle and play with it until it comes off. And I'm gonna have to check it. Up a little bit more. Let's see if I can get it off of there. And you get a picture. Zena, possibly, if she's in frame. Yep, she's in frame. Alright, here we go. And it's off. And it's a mess. Yes, I just threw my tire over without a care in the world. All right, so got a lot of dirt, a lot of yuck, cobwebs, spider webs, mud, all those fun things. I actually kind of like this, you guys being on the shorter thing instead of the jack stand. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a can of the brake cleaner and give everything a quick spin off. I'll show you guys that, but I'm going to pause so I can splice. All right, so. You just put the straw in here. I just get the cheap AutoZone stuff. Whenever I'm uh, doing something, I'm gonna go through a ton of cans of this stuff. So you're just trying to clear off all the dirt, the nastiness and everything else that's on here. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get an Allen key, Allen wrench for this right here. This is the, the hub case. And then um, I'm gonna get the socket for this as well. Um, I, I don't have sizes on my Allen wrenches. 
so you'll, you guys will just have to kind of figure out which one it's going to be but I am going to put you guys a little bit closer so you can see how it works um, and then whenever I get to the socket portion I will tell you the socket size um, this is only you're only gonna have this setup if you have an older vehicle with locking hubs um, if you don't know what locking hubs are change my angle here um, if you can see it actually says um, for one super wrench which is the brand and then it has four by two and it has four by four so four by two of course is two wheel spinning normal driving vehicle um, then four by four is actually making it where all the, the tires are have power to them it's for mud you know mud riding which some people do um, and a lot of other assorted fun things or if you happen to just be getting stuck um, on the back my Jeep is a rear wheel drive vehicle so um, she she gets her power from the back um, and I guess I'll do a video in the future of the differences unfortunately I don't have any front wheel drive vehicles um, so I can just show you what the rear wheel drive vehicles are um, what they look like and then kind of let you know where the transmission would be because that's that's the variable that changes is the where the transmission is. Um, so without getting on a soapbox with all of that, I'm just showing you this and then I'm gonna pause it. My nails look terrible because, you know, we're all under quarantine and I can't get my nails done, so sorry, whatever. All right, let me go get the tools. All right, I am back. Put you guys up a little bit. And so what I'm going to be doing here is I have my Allen wrench um, and I'm going to, I've got it properly set and in the beginning, it's going to be kind of difficult to get these guys off because they've been painted and they're old. But what I'm trying to do is maintain. Oh, shit. There we go. I'm trying to make sure it's seated all the way in there as far as it can go. And then I'm using steady force try to pry it out. And I'm only going to show you guys with one of these. Oh, and I think I just got it. Hold on. Maybe not. You can also use penetrating spray. The fun thing about this is that whoever had it for me could have rounded these guys out. Man, that might be the problem. So I'm going to pause you guys and see if I can get some penetrating spray on this and see if that helps. Okay, so I was able to get this one to go pretty easily. All I did was I put, I set it just like I did for this one, and then I gave it a couple of taps, tapped it in there, and then put a little bit of pressure on it, and there it goes. So you just spin this right off of there. And then you have to fight with it to get it back off, and take it out. I'm gonna pause it while I get the rest of them. That's all you do is you stick it in there, tap it a little bit, use penetrating spray if you need to, um, and then just use a little bit of force. It's not one of those times where you just really rip into it. You got to just be kind of patient. All right, so we did run into some issues trying to get those Allen bolts out. Uh, what ended up happening was the three of them are completely stripped out. Um, don't know if I did it, don't know if somebody else did it, they're just that way. As soon as I started trying to torque on them at all, they just were having issues. So the current plan is to go ahead and just remove the bolts that put the hub assembly on, or the locking hubs on the hub assembly. So what I've started doing, I'll show you guys, is backing out the bolts that are on there. Uh, with a 15 wrench. It is taking forever. Um, I quickly looked up how long it would take and everything else to get new parts um, to just replace this assembly and it's going to take a while, especially with the delay in the mail and everything else with the quarantine. Sorry, trying to adjust you guys. Um... So with that being said, what I'm doing, um, it's got these nice little tabs on it. So I get the 
screwdriver. This is, I've got to do more work to get that one ready. But get the screwdriver, tap on it a little bit, whichever angle you can get, to kind of push that guy up so it's easier to get them moving because they are actually making it where it's difficult to move the bolts but that is their job so once that guy is freed up and you painstakingly get to your guy your bolt Him loosened up. Ooh, this is gonna be my pain. And just fit it in there so that you have some space. All right, let's try that again. So once you get that first one, there we go. Once you get that first one going, it's just going back and forth and it's just tedious. So strategy is, I know how long these guys are because I already did the other side. And I'm just gonna keep taking them off until they hit the inner hub right here. And then I'm gonna just keep moving. And then I will break the gasket and the seal right here pull it out and then do the same thing and then it should be that all this just comes out so I'm gonna keep working on this um, you guys feel free to pause and work on that if you're actually working on one of these vehicles as well and we'll see how far we can get with it well my theory did work so what you're looking at is all of these guys loosened up right here and then look poof, they pull out so I continue to do the same thing, which is loosen these guys up until they all come out. And then once they all come out, we'll be able to start pulling all the internals out. And you guys will see what's in here, which is a mess. The other side was such a mess, and this side is definitely going to be a mess too. So what I'm doing is I'm just holding the locking hub portion of this assembly, point it out so that I can work these next round of bolts out. And if I would have done a video on the other side, you would have seen that this is the only reason we're doing this is because, because three of three of these little guys, the bolts that have the Allen heads, which I guess I mean I, there's so many Allen Allen heads on the pieces for this Jeep. I was very surprised. I've got them on my pads. I've got them all over the place, and it's just a little bit frustrating because <laughs> what's the complaint with putting furniture together with the, the Allen wrenches? I mean they strip out and then you're just kind of left with something that's messed up but luckily I thought of this way is getting it off of here because I'm probably going to go ahead and order new locking hubs just replace this whole assembly um, bilaterally both sides um, but I can't really I don't want to wait three weeks to do that because it's taking two to three weeks for parts to come in right now anything I have to order outside of getting stuff from AutoZone. So that's kind of frustrating. Um, so instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with it the best way I can. That way I can still change out the bearings and all that good stuff because once you guys see what's supposed to be in there and what's in there right now, I'm pretty sure it's going to surprise you if it's like the other side. Um, and so show you guys some pictures of that stuff in a little bit. But it's just, it's just a mess. Just a total, 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 total mess. And um, once I get done with the bearings, I'm going to remove the 
caliper and the caliper arm because I'm actually painting those. So I already have one caliper arm on the other side painted. Um, that's something that AutoZone does not have. So the 1980 CJ7, if you order calipers from AutoZone, they do not carry, or they do not come with the caliper arm like most of the other vehicles do. So I'm going to clean up my old caliper arms um, because I can order them online, but again, waiting for parts to come in. I, I don't want to be waiting on stuff this whole time. This is, this is super productive Jeep time during quarantine. So in lieu of that, clean up the clean up the arms, paint them, paint the calipers so they don't turn into this nasty rust bucket that you got going on over here. And um, that way everything will stay nice new and pretty. Because by the by the time that I'm done with this Jeep, she'll have all new bearings in the front, new calipers, pads. Um, the rotors, unfortunately, I'm going to have to clean up because I found another fun thing about this Jeep is that I had ordered brand new shiny rotors and then when they when they came in oh yeah this is just junk when they came in um when they came in it turned out that they do the hub assembly this piece right here like this and this are one piece that gets um pressed together and AutoZone doesn't cover carry this hub so then I had to wait two to three weeks. So I have no issue with keeping what I've got on here and then changing out the rotors and the hubs some other point. Um, because once they're cleaned up the other side, it's, it's not really that bad. Um, so to get this Jeep going, it's definitely worth it for me. All right, so I'm going to pause you guys and then I am going to get my tools to start taking this stuff out. Speaking of custom things that I have to order, Nowhere covers this, um, very nut, it's not they don't cover it, they don't have it. No one has the very nut, um, the very nut, can't think of words here, very nut removal tool socket I rename things look at how nasty this is it's actually not as bad as the other side but it's dirt and grease and nastiness so that's that guy let's get the next one I'm just going to require a thorough cleaning took two weeks for this to come in. The other side, I painstakingly took a chisel and a hammer to work these nuts off, and it took forever, and there may or may not have been a lot of cussing involved. Man, oh man, this thing is gross. I think I might, I might have to get a pick tool to get this next guy out of here. Like I said, the, this one isn't as bad as the other one, and that's bad. I mean, it's it's dirt and goo and mmm, just smells super super yummy. Let's see if my screwdriver will get this guy. Come on, it's a washer. He wants to be one. With the parts. But I don't want him to be one with the parts. Here we go. He's coming. This is one of those times where most people will wear gloves. But oh, my nails are already shot. So, what are you going to do? Alright, there's the next washer. I wonder if it's like, oh, I think I might, I might actually still have a bearing in here. That would really, really, really surprise me. 
considering the other side is just completely gone. Yeah, I think the bearing's still in there. So I'm going to pause this, um, get the tools necessary to start taking the caliper off. I was bleeding the brakes earlier um, because there's no fluid in the lines. Oh, and now I've got a slow little brake leak going on. There we go. All right, so let me get the um, appropriate sockets for this guy. I'll take off the caliper, and then we should be able to start just taking everything off. And pause you guys with my sort of not dirty hand. So right now we've got the Allen wrench on this little bolt. And this is one of those things where I just don't have the upper body strength for this guy. He is rusted and not happy and all the stuff that goes with that. So people without upper body, a lot of upper body strength. Leverage is your friend. Using my breaker bar, also known as the end of my the top arm of my jack. And I'm very slowly applying pressure to get him off up here. And also paying a lot of attention to the placement of this Allen wrench because I do not want to strip it out. So I'm going very slow and steady. And it is very, very slowly backing out of there. So this is for all those people who are like, I don't have the strength to work on my own vehicle. You do. You just have to do it a different way than other people do. Slowly push it down. At some point, it'll get with the program, and I won't use this bar anymore. But as of right now, it would be tearing up my hands if I didn't have it. This is one of those instances where I really miss having a socket on something like this or a normal nut instead of an allen or a hex whatever you want to call it it's annoying to have to go through this amc jeep from the 80s i don't appreciate this let's see if i got it yet Oh no, see that's still very much going to tear up my hands if I even try. So instead, we'll continue our slow process and do it this way. But again, I'm constantly holding to make sure that nothing is getting torqued in one spot over the other. I don't want to strip anything out. I don't want to snap the head of this. I want to be as careful as I possibly can be with it. Because at some point, slow and steady, no wind, we're getting this bolt on. And we're almost to that point because I feel like it's slowly loosening up a little bit. But again, this vehicle's been sitting for 12 years through no fault of its own. It's running just fine. Although I didn't know my bearings were terrible. I thought she was running just fine. That's what I get for talking too much. Um, so she was running just fine. Parked her. Moved to Hawaii for a couple years. Came back. She was all kinds of upset. Moved all over the place. I'm saying, I'm going to work on my Jeep. I'm going to work on my Jeep didn't have the time. Quarantine is giving me the time. Jeep by day, off projects by night. If you notice, there's a flashlight on this, so we're actually cutting into household project time right now, but it's not super dark yet. And I really wanted to get this stuff taken apart because I need to clean these calipers and paint them and everything else. All right, so we got that guy off. 
Mm. That was the fun part of getting that off of there. So, clip is off. I had a fight with the other one to get it to separate. Um, and then the other thing that we're doing is... Actually, I can just show you back here. So, I've got one bolt here. And it's super dirty back here. And then I have another bolt. Not the castle bolt. I have another, I have two bolts on the caliper that I've got to take off. And so I threw some penetrating oil on them. I had to take my banjo bolt off. Um, and then move the brake line. So I am going to remove this guy and then hopefully be able to, well, I'm not going to be able to get to the other guy right now. Um, but I'm going to work on getting this bolt off and it's the same principle what you just saw me do with the, um, the other bolt. I'm just going to put it on there and then use some strength. So I guess I'll keep recording so you guys can see. But I've got my socket wrench right here. I'm going to snug him in. I'm going to try to use my breaker bar because I tried a second ago with this guy and he was just giving me a hard time. Oh, and he's still giving me a hard time. He's just like rusted, stuck on there. This is one of those rare instances where man oh man, he is fun. So sometimes after you spray the penetrating oil, you can try to go the opposite direction you're trying to do and see if that helps loosen him up. And that's exactly what I'm going to try to do right now. Get all this taken apart. get any movement that way. Mm. Nope. So, more penetrating oil it is. Well, actually, a little bit of brake cleaner because there's a mess in there. It's all muddy. Evidently, old me like to take this thing different places. I got her all muddy. And older me is a little bit annoyed about that. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to pause you guys while I fight with this, but you understand the core concept. Penetrating oil, trying to get the bolt off, fight with it, grr, 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 and then I'll, re I'll put something out. I'll uh, unpause you guys in a little bit and we'll continue working. All right, welcome back everyone. Um, so, it's not nighttime anymore, next day. Uh, dog's outside, child's outside, might have interruptions. Um, so, what I have done is I actually removed the caliper. Uh, it's still connected to the brake line because the banjo bolt is actually giving me a lot of problems. So I finally just got fed up with it, honestly. Um, and and what I did was, oh, gonna pause you. No. Okay, so what I did was, since I was having so many issues with the banjo bolt, which is this guy right here, um, and this actually is a hollow bolt with a hole on each side, and what it does is it lets the brake fluid into the caliper, and that's how you end up getting your braking power. But it wasn't working very well. It's it's just completely rounded out. The other side, there was no problem whatsoever, and it was just boom and out of there. Um, so what I've done to continue to be productive instead of fighting with this bolt and maybe having a better angle with removing it is this all, that's one of the pads, this all was clamshelled in here. So I removed the retaining 
the retaining brackets and poles they were right here. So once I removed, and they were in there like that. So once I removed the Allen bolt that was for that, it allowed for me to remove these two pieces. And then I, and, and I did that by putting um, a screwdriver on the end and then just kind of nicely tapping it out of there with the screwdriver and the hammer. Um, and then I just kept wiggling it around until there was a little bit of freedom because again, vehicle's been sitting for 12 years. It's just kind of a mess right now. Um, and so once it was free, I just popped it out and I am paying a lot of attention to not putting any stress on that brake line. And I'm just kind of suspending that right here. Um, the caliper mounting bolt was one of the ones that I think I took out um, before I paused you guys last night. That one really didn't give me too many issues. I just had to use a little bit of force. Um, I didn't have you guys playing in the background because, you know, honestly, it was putting it, putting the um, the socket and the wrench on it and uh, a ratchet on it and then using the breaker bar for the amount of force that I needed. So once I got that off, then I ran into the banjo bolt, which became a huge issue. Um, so I'm actually putting my mounting bolt back in place a little bit, but this was to tear down the remaining portion of the locking hub assembly with the bearings and everything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank up the Jeep and uh, turn the wheels again, so that way I've got a better angle for everything, and uh, and it's more straight because I actually had to angle it so I could do what I was doing with the brakes. So I'm gonna pause you guys, crank up the Jeep, and turn the wheel. All right, so I moved the tire for, or I moved the rotor, uh, and with the I cranked up the Jeep, and then the neighbor came by with their dog, and then my dog, and their dog, and it was a lot. Um, so anyways, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of moving the rotor back and forth and working that bearing out and here it comes. So I'm going to squish it back in a little bit and wow, it actually still has the bearing. I mean, it looks terrible because <laughs> it's gross and yuck and all of that, but it's still there. So... It is just absolutely disgusting, but we actually still have it. Dina, go. Dina, go. Um, so we actually still have it. So I am actually going to clean this up because I did have to get a press so I can press my bearings and everything into place. Um, so once, once this is cleaned up, then this will give me the support that I need in order to press in the other, press the new bearings in after all this gets cleaned out. And, um, It'll just act as a, as a buffer so I can get that, those bearings properly pressed in. So I'm gonna just kind of stick this to the side and see if I can get the rest of it. Izzy, will you get me um, one of the blue paper towels, please? It's starting to get really greased up. Oh, yeah, there's the other one. Okay. You just have to look, sweetheart. All right, so. So, um, the seal is actually still here. Thank you. I'm going to get a screwdriver and pry out the seal. I have to pry out the seal. See, the other side, all of these pieces were just gone. This side we actually have things. So I'm actually having to work with it. This might actually be something I've got to press out with the, the drill or drill. Press out with the with the um, press. Press out with the press. But there you go. That's your basic breakdown to get to your spindle and all of that. Um, so the next step is to the next step is to
clean off all of this. Um, it's going to be a lot of the brake cleaner, clean out all of this, and then remove those bearing cups that are remaining because this is this is the bearing with the races and everything. These little guys, races, racers, whatever. Spinny guys. Um, so this is out. The other one is still stuck because the um, you can't see. It's still stuck because the seal in here is still stuck in place, which is great. I mean, it's a good seal, um, but I'm going to have to remove that seal. I'm going to end up taking a screwdriver to it. If I have to do anything outside of that, um, I will let you guys know when I unpause you. And then um, once this seal comes out right here, then the inner bearing will actually freely come out just like the other guy but it's the cups that are going to be fun um, so the other side before I got the bearing press um, I just took a screwdriver to it and I can't really do it with it being all gunked up like this but but I know somebody's probably like okay so um, I figured I would demonstrate what I'm doing so what you guys can kind of see um, so It's a, it's a non-legging day. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> I'm not Mormon. I just, I like dresses. They're comfy. It's like being in pajamas all day. If anyone's wondering. All right. So what I'm doing is you can see that I just put my, I put my screwdriver right along the lip of the bearing. And I give it a few love taps and then I turn and I do the same thing. Gradually, just pushing this guy right out of here. So it's basically, you know, a quarter of a turn. Time. Rotate. And it's almost three because it just went down a lot. Quarter turn. My neighbors are now mowing their, their yard. So. Directions for a nice little video. And in a minute, it's going to be done. So it's so close. seen a couple different videos where people are like you have to have a bearing press to press out the bearing blah 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 you know what you don't you don't you take your time you pay attention to what you're doing I'm not messing this hub up at all I'm maintaining being only on the bearing cup and getting that bad boy out of there is it easier if you have a press it absolutely is but you know what not everyone's got a press or the money for a press and this works so who cares if it works it works look at that and that's their bearing cup one of them we have two so now I'm going to put you guys on pause again my hands are disgusting I should have worn gloves for this one I wore gloves for the other one when I was lubing stuff up but um I have paper towels shop towels but my daughter they're the blue paper towels so she doesn't understand the difference she knows what paper towels look like she knows the color blue if i would have said shop towels i would have never received these all right so i'm gonna pause you guys and i'm going to basically do the same thing on the other one and then once it's out i will show you guys how to get all this stuff get get cleaned up and all that stuff so um, also, if you are in a situation where you are having to do this, you need to put something down that's not going to cause a bunch of vivids and holes and messed up spots all over your rotor if you happen to have the same assembly. Um, maybe there's another woman out there that has a 1980 CJ7 or a novice mechanic that has a 1980 CJ7 and is doing the same stuff that I'm doing. If not, um, you can do whatever you need to do. This is what's working for me. Um, other videos that I have will be more 
similar to what you are going to be doing. I know that not a lot of people are going to be doing this. They'll probably take it to shops, but it's it's informative and it's it's good to put it out there. Um, I wish I would have been making videos a while back ago with all the stuff that I was doing with my Ram or my Trailblazer, um, but I didn't, and it's because of the AutoZone guys <laughs> and a few other people um, evoking me constantly about making these videos, so now I'm going to make them. So some of the stuff is going to be stuff that uh, novice people will not try, but hopefully you will, as long as you have another vehicle. You can always end up doing something. It works. Izzy, mommy's making a video. Um, and I think that you can also do it. If I can do all of this stuff while I have my daughter and my dog outside and my neighbors and all the rest of the distractions, I don't have the best patience, but I have enough to work on what I need to work on. So um, off my soapbox, I'm going to pause you guys so that I can get this other guy out of here and then we will go to the next step which is cleaning all of this up. So lots and lots of banging with the screwdriver and the hammer. This and tap tap, not like that. Tap 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 tap. And It is out. It is out. No, no. So the rotor is much happier being free. And we have this guy. So funny story about this too. Um you see this says made in the USA. Right? Okay. So I went to AutoZone. I love AutoZone. AutoZone, don't get grumpy with me, but I am going to have a complaint here. So I went to AutoZone and at first they didn't think they had the bearings for the Jeep. And so then I ordered, I went online, um, JC Whitney or one of the four wheel drive places because they have an abundance of Jeep parts. Really didn't want to have to wait for the bearings, blah, blah, blah. Um, but had to at that point, I thought. So ordered um bilaterally the the bearings the seals the snap rings um new locking washers uh and i thought i was getting two of the bearing nuts but i only got one for each side so i'm having to reuse one of them from each side from the old stuff so anyways um, then I just happened to mention that to a different AutoZone guy and he was like, oh no, I think we do have the bearings. So I was like, oh, okay. So I ordered them and I started to put them onto my Jeep. They are made in China. Um, when I can, I try to get US parts and I was really surprised that they were made in China. So I was working with it. I was, I started that the other side. Um, and then ironically, as soon as I got the made in China ones, put on the Jeep, a little delivery guy comes up and he's like, here, and I'm like, ah, great. And then I decided to use the USA parts. Um, so I don't know, maybe the previous Jeep owner, my baby Jeep, um, maybe, maybe the side, it's all disintegrated. Maybe that side's like the made in China side side and maybe this side being American made has withstood the test of time. So I'm going to show you something really interesting. Move this stuff around. Set you guys up with a view. This is the, the made in America. The made in America. Made in America. It's nasty but whatever it's still in one piece bearing cup, the other one, and then the other guy. I'm going to pause you guys really quick. Or actually, I'm going to leave you guys on because my hands are all gooey. And I'm going to show you what the other side look like.
big crazy gust to win. Okay, so <laughs> these, one, two, three, four, five racers. Can you guys see that? Yeah. This and this are all that's left of the previous two bearing cups, bearings, and seal. How does that happen? If someone out there is watching this, just <laughs> that actually has a little bit more knowledge than me. Can you please explain how they just magic themselves out of my Jeep minus five racers or races? I've seen people say racers, races, because this is crazy. Where did they go? I mean, I can sort of see where this goes. I mean, this was like this, sort of, maybe. I can kind of get that image, right? And then the little racer guys and like the spinning. But and before you guys were like, oh, it's not even the right part. Guess what, buddy? It is. You can put it right here next to the other one. <laughs> and that's all that's left. It's all gone. I don't, and that's the funny thing is like, I don't even know if they're made in America because they're like so scratched up that I'm just going to assume that they're made in China because you can't read anything on here. It's just all scratches and gouges and that's it. I get, I can see a, I can see maybe a number two on there and that's it. So if you know what happened to my bearings, and why one side, the side that says it's made in America, and the side that doesn't say it's made anywhere and has completely exploded and disintegrated into nothingness. Um, let me know. I would like to know. It's, it's a very interesting thing. I, my mind was blown. It just was. Um, so, back to business. What we're going to do is we're going to get our handy dandy brake spray. After I clean my handy dandy hands, that gust of wind just took my... Oh, no, they're still here. So, I got my hands a little bit and start giving a good liberal spray to all this stuff. But it's crazy. Who does that? Not who does that. Did you did that? I kind of answered my own question there. But how does it happen? How does that happen? It's bizarre. Oof. All right. Back to action. I'm gonna put my sunglasses on too, like cool guy. Um, because I don't typically wear the safety glasses, but I will wear my sunglasses. Oh yeah, you know what? I should probably get things out of the way. Consumables. My daughter was watching like the little piece, little pieces of the video last night and I sprayed and she jumped and it was really funny so I felt like I had to share that with you guys. It was on the video, not like she was out here. So, joke is women know how to clean. I don't like cleaning. Um, I like doing my projects. If I could have a maid, it would be awesome. I would gladly redo a kitchen or a bathroom or something of the sort and uh, trade off somebody coming into my house to clean because I hate the winter. I do it out of necessity, but I do enjoy this stuff, even though sometimes I want to take a hammer to something not to get a bearing out, but to just hammer the crap out of it because it doesn't want to comply with what I want it to do. All that lovely dirt and grime and yuck. Alright, 
So we're cleaning this guy off the best that we can to get him all nasty and dirty again a little bit. I'm looking for my screwdriver that is also dirty for us to get clean and nasty. Because I want to get all these little slides clear. They are just stupidly caked up. rotate and we're just getting all this stuff out so the funny thing is is because the other side was basically completely dry inside and all those little disintegrated pieces I showed you guys the cleanup was like super 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 easy. Um, this one has a mix of yuck and gunk and all that if, one, if you guys are wondering why I wear have artificial nails because my natural nails are super duper thin, so they break. Um, they're like paper thin. And I also kind of use these as tools. I was doing some work at a lady's house and she was like, your nails are like extra tools for you. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I never thought about it that way, but it's true because I give my nails way more of a workout than most women do. I use them to scratch and gouge and you and you want to know where these hands have been. Lots of dirty, not dirty like that. Dirty places. Um, I do plumbing, electrical, HVAC, drywall. I do pretty much everything. I don't really can't think of something off the top of my head that I don't do. I do roofing work. I do everything. Sunglasses, safety first. And this is why I buy the cheap AutoZone stuff. Because Locust makes great goods. And I'd be going through like $100 worth of brake fluid before you know it. These guys are like four bucks a piece, three, four bucks a piece. <laughs> And um, the other stuff, the Lucas stuff, oh my gosh, it's like $10 a bottle. And for me, with this kind of stuff, it's not worth it. Brand loyalty, Amsoil, Lucas, shout out. I would love it if you guys paid me to talk about your products. That would be great. Um, I don't really see that in my future, but... Um, but yeah, this is one of those times where it's like, I don't care if it's Amsoil or Lucas or whatever. I don't know if Amsoil makes brake fluid or brake cleaner or not. For this application, it doesn't really matter. I don't really care. All right, and then um, turn you guys around. Hello, hello. Um, so the. the Hub and rotor assembly is going to be the same as far as the cleaning stuff. It's not a big deal. You clean it. It's gooey. It's yucky. It looks like this. Um, so turn it upside down. The chaw. And sunglasses, safety first. <laughs> my disclaimer. Break this break. And the paper towels. And I just had to keep looking at you guys too to make sure it's still recording because I did a whole session a little bit ago with one of these things and uh, you guys weren't there. <laughs> my screen was blank. I thought I was recording daughter thought I was recording because she kept coming over here and like, mommy, are you recording? And uh, you guys weren't there. So you guys missed a whole lot of whatever I was doing. And I think, you know, this is just me starting out. 
you guys are, this is my first like, this is my first video, um, but I'm probably going to do a lot shorter videos because I swear this thing is going to be like a lot of pieces and I am a complete novice with making, with making YouTube videos. So that being said, um, right now you guys are broken down into a lot of different segments and I am going to try to put you guys, <laughs> put all these videos back together again, but it definitely requires a little bit more time. Um, so if somebody knows more techie stuff and wants to like write me a dialogue of what I can do to fix that, I'm going to, I'm, I'll spend a little bit of time researching it unless, you know, before somebody sends me something, um, just to kind of put all this stuff together I and mean, then have to do a breakdown. But a lot of this mechanical stuff, like the five minute videos, they help when you're just trying to get a grasp for it. But if you really don't have a lot of core comprehension on this stuff, um, it's a lot better for someone to try to break it down into what this does and what that does and everything else. Um, so off my soapbox again, daughter and puppy are right in front of me. Um, and I'm going to pause you guys so I can start putting these pieces back together again. Hey! Okay guys, I actually lied. Um, I still have to get this other caliper, caliper bolt, caliper arm bolt off of here. Um, so... take you guys out for a second so if you look oh look you can see my sexy truck um and the trailblazer somewhere oh, yep. um that's the caliper bolt no nope, that no nope, no nope. right here this is the caliper bolt cal caliper arm bolt this one's already taken out so this one i'm just gonna put the socket on there and the ratchet and the breaker bar. If you guys can see it, you're not going to see it from there. But so, this is what I was talking about earlier with the leverage thing and the lack of upper body strength and all that good stuff. So, you put that there, you need all the dirty stuff that you have everywhere, and you breaker bar on. You want to make sure that this stays straight and you're just going to try to rip it down. I might actually have to alter where I'm at. And don't be afraid to use your foot. the foot power yet. <laughs> I have more leg strength than I do upper body strength and I'm not tearing up my shoulders today for this. And sometimes me. Do whatever you can do to get it out of there. And some professional mechanic is yelling at me about something. But you know what? You gotta do what you gotta do to get stuff out. <sighs> and it's going slowly. And I actually have a little bit of the bolt exposed right here. So what I did was I put some penetrating oil on both sides. So as this goes, it will really help me. Oh, shoot, got right off there. It will really help me out with getting this off. Oh. Again, Nicole's been sitting for 12 years. She's 40 years old. Thing. 
of my max leg strength. See, you guys get to have a long fun with me. And I do, I am using a special um, socket for all this. It's not, my, it's not intentional, I just don't know where my regular one is. But it's kind of handy to have it. This one, short break from this, is difficult. It's like every time I try to put you guys on camera for something, it's like the other side was easier. Um, but this guy is a pivot. I don't know what his technical name is. I use an adjustable ratchet. He is freaking awesome because I had changed out all my spark plugs and my coils on my RAM a couple weeks ago. And if I didn't have this guy, I would not have been able to get the rear sockets. Dodge, I'm gonna call you out right now. Terrible, terrible design. Lots of forums about everybody losing their minds trying to change out their spark plugs and take their coils out because you guys decided that you didn't want to have those spark plugs and those coil packs easily accessible. The first six is fine. If you have a V8, you have eight of them and you have 16 spark plugs. Don't get me started on that. That's really stupid. She's a Hemi. Yay, Hemis. But anyways, this little guy, he saved my life with that truck. Um, and so since I used him so much, I had him, but I don't know where my other guy is. So I'm going to keep wrestling with this. You guys get the idea of it. Leg up, push down, even pressure. Don't, don't try to go all crazy with it. it it's just dumb. Take your time, slow and steady. Um, I get kind of rushed whenever I have you guys on film because I know that it just looks kind of stupid and we're 26 minutes into this video and I have other videos. So I have to squish all of it together. So try not to make this like a two hour long process but in reality it is it takes a long time if you have all these bolts and everything else that's rusted it takes a while vehicles 40 years old been sitting for 12 years you can do the math metal rusts metal squishes itself together and forms a unique bond that only fierce amounts of pressure will allow them to separate it's like the best marriage ever they bond together and they won't let anybody break them up. So, um, yeah, I'm going to keep working on this, corny jokes aside. And um, I will see you guys in a little bit. And the arm is now free. Yay! I'm going to clean this off with some brake fluid. And then I will be painting these red. Um, I painted the other side because since there are only a special order online part um, and none of the local part stores carry them, even with their special order stuff, which is faster than other special order stuff, um, clean them, paint them, make it where they look all nice and pretty and they don't get further arrested and messed up and stuff like that. But now we're free. so. I'm gonna be cleaning myself up. My hands are all yucked up <laughs> pretty extensively. Um, so I'm gonna clean my hands up and then get some of the red and tacky grease and um, start doing the bearings. I'm gonna press in the bearings with the press. Um, if you don't have a press at home, you can do what I did. Um, I don't want to have to do it again, so it was worth it for me to get the press. But basically what I did was I put the new bearings in place the way that they were supposed to be according to the Jeep Haynes manual. Um, and then I used another bearing on top of it. And then I got a flat piece of MDF pretty thick piece of it and I get I applied equal pressure by hitting that with a hammer um 
until they recess in all the way. And then I repeat, I did that for the, um, I did that for the bearing cups first and I got them to sit pretty well. And then I did it for the bearings themselves. Um, there's, there's a lot of mixed emotions on doing that. I actually, with a lot of time and patience, was able to get all of it squared away. Um, so it is doable. That is a big pain in the butt. Um, I'm gonna need to do my first round with this press and see how it works out. I might show you guys, you know, just a little snippet of how to do that. Um, hopefully it was worth the money because it was really annoying to do those um, bearings and bearing cuts. But what are you gonna do, you know? Uh, so I will work on that, give myself a cleanup because my hands are terrible, uh, lube up my bearings, which I actually need to do in front of you guys so you know how to do that if you don't know how to, um, and then we will take it from there. Alright, so we're back, and we are going to be putting some gloves on and opening up our red and tacky this red and tacky and I uh, just grabbed something that's greasy so now I got yuck all over me again just clean my hands anybody ever wonder why mechanics are always dirty 